Welcome. So, my name is Wei Bin Lai, and uh, a warm welcome to this TCS presentation. Uh, clearly, you can hear me, it's quite loud. Um, I'd like to also introduce John Elliott in the back there. Wave, thank you very much. Uh, we have about half an hour for today, and uh, what I'd like to do is just give you a framing in terms of the agenda. So I'll spend a couple of minutes just giving you an idea for those of you who don't, don't know who TTS is, just to give you an orientation, just to set the scene and paint a picture of what we do in our sweet spot. I'll then hand over to John uh, from Computer Center, and he'll give you an insight and share some information on what uh, Computer Center have done with our technology over the last four or five years, and how that's optimized their process and um, provided them with a single source for the integrated system. We'll then open up uh, the floor to any questions, and uh, we'll just summarize and uh, uh, call it a wrap then. Okay, so in terms of TTS, uh, here's some headline figures. So we have 11 offices located in eight different countries, predominantly in Europe. Um, that's our power base. And last year, uh, 2014, we came in at uh, 28 uh, million euros. So uh, in our world, we're one of the biggest players. We're independent, we're profitable, and uh, we're not dependent on any VC funding, etc. So from our inception, we've been a profitable business. Um, and you know, we're very, very proud of that in terms of sustainability uh, for our install base. In terms of the organizations, we've been around uh, for 15 years, and uh, we started as an SAP training house, and uh, we suddenly got uh, three or four different practices, which I'll share with you later on. In terms of our store base, we have 500 global clients, uh, of which we're very proud of, and we cater for some very, very large organizations globally. And uh, another compelling figure is that uh, of those 500 organizations, our support and maintenance on uh, the software side is 99%, so it's almost flawless. We lose a couple a year, but that's testament to our software, to our service, and how organizations are using it, not only for silo projects, but they actually use and underpin our technology across the whole enterprise. And again, we'll be able to share, uh, uh, or give you an insight on that with the uh, computer center. And today, we have about four million users on the software. So clearly, that's not authors, but people retrieving access and the content online. A bit earlier on, we uh, have a footprint, a very strong footprint in Europe. We're a German-based company, uh, so we have a variety of uh, yeah, offices uh, in and around uh, Germany, and we're headquarters in Heidelberg. So if you've not been to Heidelberg, we're about an hour south from Frankfurt, and then we actually have a, a user conference in June, uh, which you're called invited to. Uh, and you know, feel free to reach out to us if you want an invite to that. But as you can see, um, we predominantly around the DAC region, but we're now expanding uh, due to our success. We're now obviously in the UK, we're in Paris, Spain, and most recently we opened up in New York to, to cater for our install base there. In terms of our technology, we have three practices. Uh, we'll demonstrate the software for you today, um, and this is a major part of our business, about 50% of our business. And we're unique because we have a fully unified, integrated authoring publication and performance support platform. So for those of you who are looking uh, around this tool set, you'll find that there are some fantastic technologies out there, but they're not fully integrated. And what we mean by that is that there are siloed databases, siloed or different authoring environments. We have a fully unified one, um, which will allow you to have a true single source in terms of workflow version control, publishing, and how you retrieve and report against that as well. In Germany, we have a very strong TMC practice as well. So we're actually success factors resellers. Um, so in terms of supply chain or having a single supplier, we are an organization that can cater for that. And we have case studies where they bought our technology for authoring and performance support, but we're also plugged in, for example, success factors for them. And then we have an integration, a connector between those two. So there is no uh, double data uh, scenarios where you've got to then export it and upload it to your LMS and so on and so forth. And again, we'll be happy to share more information on that at the stand. And lastly, we do cater for e-learning content production. We have 40 full-time staff producing e-learning for our clients. And uh, you know, we very much drink our own champagne because the product was actually born to optimize our, our content creation in, in its first uh, inception. And um, we have a very good practice now, uh, a profitable practice, 
producing out uh, high quality e-learning content, not only for IT simulation based training, for example, like SAP or SuccessFactors or, or Salesforce.com, but also non-IT related content as well. So your soft skills, your HR training, your compliance training, all from one platform, okay? Like all organizations, human resource is critical. Talent is critical to us as a business. And uh, we currently have over 200 uh, employees full-time, and uh, they are spread ac across 21 different countries. And again, we cater for that global audience. And we're very proud on the stats that uh, our average uh, retention rates are over five years. So people that join our company, stay in the company, and that should give you a level of comfort in terms of you know, what type of company or partnership you're, you're gonna be working with in terms of the company. My last slide for this is just to give you a snapshot, an idea of some of the clients that we cater for. Uh, in the UK, clearly we have uh, Computer Center, but uh, names like B&Q uh, should be familiar with you. And these are all enterprise licenses, so they don't use it for one small project. Uh, this is, goes across the whole enterprise, around SAP, around their LMS, and so on and so forth. And the highlight one here uh, alongside Computer Center is Aspect Software, where they bought not only our authoring environment, they bought our performance support suite, and also we implemented and plugged in their success factors as well, and that's now fully unified. In actual fact, we're framing discussions on the, an OEM, where actually every time you buy an aspect software, it'll be packaged with our technology behind that. Okay, well, many thanks for your time for now. What I'd like to do is hand you over to John, and uh, he'll share more of you later. Hi, everybody. Uh, just gonna switch screens. That's me, John Elliott. I'm the Online Learning Resource Manager at Computer Centre. Uh, I'm just going to run through our journey with TTKF, which started in 2010 and is carrying on today. Computer Centre, we're a, an IT services and solutions uh, provider. Um, we've got offices all over Europe. In our three main countries, really, are the UK, Germany and France. But we've got about 10,000 employees split about three and a half thousand in Germany, four and a half thousand in the UK, and about 1,800 in France. In 2010, we undertook a project whereby we were actually going to transform or implement SAP solutions across the three countries. The learning requirement was that we had 10,000 employees that we would need to train. We decided that what we'd do is we would do that in three stages. So the first stage was going to go live in Germany in February 2011. The second phase was going to be in August 2011 when we were going to go live in the UK. And then in June 2013 we were going to go live in France. So our journey goes from 2010, you'll see a number of key milestones there. Um, and then at the end here we, we are in at the end of 2014 coming into 2015. 2010, March 2010, and I actually looked up this morning, the iPad wasn't actually released in March 2010, so before we actually undertook our journey, we didn't have anything like that available, so we were using um, a lot of different methods. First thing to do, because we were going to train 10,000 people, we needed to select a tool. Now that tool itself had a whole number of requirements that it had to tick. The main one, and this was probably the biggest decision that we actually made as a company, was that we decided that we were going to create our own materials. So we could have paid somebody else to come in and create those materials for us, but we decided that our people knew our systems best, our people knew their jobs best, so we decided that we were going to internally author. So every single piece of learning that we've actually got created was, was created by computer centre employees. We needed to get something out very quickly. In March 2010, in less than a year, we were going to be delivering uh, or implementing our SAP solutions into Germany. So we had to get something that was installed and ready to go as quickly as possible. We also, the, because we were going to train internally, basically the people that were going to be creating the materials were also in a lot of cases people that were testing the new systems, the new SAP systems. So what we couldn't really do was pull them out of their jobs and actually get them spending weeks creating materials. So we had to have something that would allow us to create lots of materials very quickly. At this moment, we didn't know how many learning modules we were going to create. But in the end, we created over 2,000. So 2,000 individual segments of learning were actually created across the three groups. And we'll show how that's actually broken down in a minute. Because we were going 
in Germany, then the UK and France, we needed language support. Now again, looking back on some of the stuff that we've actually got, when we first were uh, with T or when we first decided to go with TTS, they had no French language support. So basically, we knew we bought the tool on the understanding that the French language support would come out before our French go live, which was kicking off in 2013. All of our systems or our, our new systems were going to be SAP, so we needed a product that was SAP compatible. So basically, we would go in, capture the materials in SAP. Not only are they available as learning modules externally from SAP, but TTS has a, um, a function that allows you to pick up your learning relative to the SAP transaction that you're in. It's called quick access. So if you're in a, a SAP transaction, you pick help and it brings up all of the learning that's relevant to that. And we decided to go with TTKF. Now, how does TTKF work? I've gone off the top of the screen there. Okay. Basically, you have a server. Now, your server holds all of your published materials. So in the day-to-day -day running, people can actually go onto the server. We've got a published website and pick up any of the learning that they actually need. On that server, you create your courses and your learning modules. So, for example, um, we, we divided all our, our areas into business areas. So, for example, HR, finance, um, sales, etc. They had their own areas, and within there they had courses and then modules that were actually created within them. So they're all created on the server. Every PC that an author is using has to have a client installed. What they do is they have the client installed and then they go into the SAP transaction or wh whatever application they're using, you then capture the screen. So you capture the learning that you're going to create. You then annotate that learning. So you add any of your um, tips, tricks, highlight boxes. You then upload that to the server and then you publish it. Once you publish it, it becomes available to anybody that can connect to the network. So. So we had to make sure that we didn't publish materials that weren't of the standard that we required. So, June 2010, so just a little bit. So March, we decided to go with TTS. In June, we installed our systems. Okay, well, we didn't. TTS came in and they installed our server for us. Now, that server has or holds all of the published materials, but the client that has to be installed on every PC that's going to be authoring. Now again that, that threw up a, um, a, not a problem but something that we had to address in the fact that in Germany all of our employees have admin rights on their PCs so they can just install whatever software they want. In the UK we don't have any admin rights so what we had to do was we had to find a way of delivering TTKF, the software, to an individual client PC when they requested it. So we had to work closely with our IS department. Again, when we had upgrades, when we had the French language support come out, we had to do exactly the same. So we had to upgrade the server, and then we had to upgrade all of the clients. Now, we had in the UK over 100 clients. So trying to logistically um, deliver a software update to all of those. Let's come back. OK. We also wanted to brand everything. So everything was branded, Computer Centre, we have our own colours, we have our own logos, etc. But the important thing was, is that if we're going to create 2,000 learning modules, we needed a template. We needed something that people could use to actually create their materials. We had authors that may be creating modules in an individual course, and it may have been two or three different people creating them. What we needed to make sure was that all of those learning modules looked the same. We didn't want one author creating everything in green and one author creating everything in purple. So what we did was we created a template, branded it with our, our computer centre colours, created a logo. So we actually created a brand there. My Guide became our brand for our published materials. Also, what we needed to make sure we did was that we only released materials when they met the criteria or when we thought they were satisf satisfactory to be able to be used. So we created a workflow. And that workflow basically means that you capture your materials, they then have to be quality checked, and then they're released. So we had a, a team of people that would actually quality check materials and send materials back if they were really... A, a, the idea of the learning module is that someone needs to be able to use the tool, not get from the beginning of the learning module to the end of the learning module. So what we did was we made sure that people could navigate, people knew where they were going, people could could 
navigate through the learning modules. So at the very beginning, we were sending quite a few modules back to be re, uh, reworked. August 2010, Germany decided, Germany kicked off their author training. Now Germany was slightly different because Germ our German company, they already had SAP. So they had a lot of experience in SAP themselves. And what they actually did was they, they worked with TTS, the supplier, and TTS came in and created all of the learning modules for them. So the course layer and all of the modules themselves were all created by TTS. TTS trained all of the authors in the classroom, and then in Germany, they started creating their materials. So we had very little input in Germany, in the UK. We knew that they were using their template, we knew they had their materials live, and we knew the structure um, of their courses and modules. They, we mirrored that in the UK as we did HR, accounts, sales, etc., etc. And then, we moved into 2011, and what we've actually got, in 2011, the German SAP systems all went live. And the My Guide, all of the materials that were released automatically appear. Once they actually go to release, they automatically um, appear on the My Guide site. Well, you can actually, you might not be able to pick it out there. In the top right hand corner, one of the great things about TTKF is that when you create content, you decide or you declare whether it's German, French, or English. If you switch your My Guide or your server published materials to German, it will only show you the German materials. If you switch it to English, it will only show you the English. What I'll do is I've got a connection at the end. I'll try and log into our My Guide site and just give you a very quick open, show you how it actually works. Now they delivered over 850 modules of learning. So those modules of learning were materials that were released. So they were available to, to, to the employees. Now what you actually see here Okay, is they don't always have to be e-learning. So they can actually be PowerPoint presentations that were actually uploaded to a course. It could be a video, it could be a Word document that would complement the online learning. And so Germany went live, everything seemed to be fine. In March, so less than, uh, less than a, a couple of months later, we kicked off in the UK. Now, in the UK, it was slightly different. We actually took the punt to create everything ourselves. And the way we actually split it up is that each of the areas, HR, accounts, sales, etc., they all had a training captain. That training captain decided what materials or what courses and learning would go into their area for the go live. Now, it didn't have to be online learning. It could be classroom training. For example, if you've got people using critical sales systems, you're not just going to give them e-learning. We put them into classrooms as well and we trained them. It may have been webinars. If people couldn't attend cl classroom, we did webinars. But the one single thing we had was that all of the learning that we created was underpinned by TTKF. So if, you, if salespeople came in and they were trained on a system, that system or the, the actual learning or training course that they were attending would mirror the TTKF so that when they got back to their workplace, when their system started going live, they had these materials to come back on. Okay? What we also did was um, a lot of materials were available to all employees. We didn't, um, we didn't train people in any other way other than creating online learning for them. For example, probably the biggest one was all employees have access to a, an employee self-service portal where you book your holiday, you book your training, etc. We didn't train anybody on that. We just created a set of learning materials and those learning materials then went live. We made some subtle changes to the template. First of all, we translated it. We made it not German, we made it English. But what we also did was we, we actually looked at the materials that are actually being generated um, and we actually added a couple of things that would actually make it easier for people to create materials. Okay? Um, we actually find that in the UK, even in 2011, and in Computer Centre as well, is that online learning was already embedded. People were already using online learning in a variety of other methods. We use a number of off-the-shelf e-learning packages. We created our own e-learning for, for specific systems, etc. So everybody had the same template. What we then did was we started training our authors. So, We've actually divided our business areas 
uh, again, I'll take HR as an example, HR would have a training captain and then HR would have a number of authors within HR. So HR employees that wanted to actually um, create materials as part of the project. Now, obviously if you're creating so many pieces or so many learning um, modules, some people wanted to do it, some people didn't want to do it, okay? So what we tried to do is we tried to accommodate people as best as we could. Remembering as well that a lot of these people were also the testers for the system. So they had to create the materials and test the systems. And as we're moving towards Go Live, systems are changing continually. So we ran a little half day training course, um, showed people how to capture the basics, and then off they went and started creating their materials. Now what we found very, very quickly, as materials started to appear, is that we needed to tie it down further, really. So as we came across problems or things that we hadn't seen before, what we did was we created a help and a useful tips guide. Now that useful tips guide started off with like two or three items in it, and by the end of the, uh, or when we went live in the UK, it had like 30 or 40 tips in there. So any new authors that were coming on board, we trained them, gave them the, the, the training course, then gave them the useful tips. We were not learning as we went along, but we, we'd never done anything as big as this. The other issue that we actually had, or not so much an issue, is that we were capturing our materials on test systems. Okay? Because our test systems were being developed before Go Live, we couldn't basically wait until a, a system was ready to go live and then start capturing the materials. So we had to make a decision as to, to how far out we actually decided the functionality was there for us to capture. Some systems weren't ready for capturing until uh, maybe a couple of weeks before go live. So it was all hands to the pump to create those materials as close as possible. So our materials were actually created there. And little things that we weren't aware of, um, that you, would, you wouldn't think. The, the single biggest um, thing that we saw in our materials, believe it or not, was spelling. So people would send materials in to be published, and they basically the spell checker in, in the system was, was German. So it was German looking at English writing. So we, we never would have believed that every module that came through would have spelling mistakes in it. So we addressed that very, very quickly. So we, we put out a, a tip you know, spell check everything before you actually send it through. Because you can't publish materials that have got spelling mistakes into them. And so that, that, we never saw that one coming. We um, animated some of the screens, so people could put animations on their screens, which is a really good idea, and then materials start coming through that make you feel sick. Because you've got transitions coming in and, and things flick, flicking across the screen. So we actually controlled it and said, you know, transitions are, are, and animations very good, but you know, don't do too many of them. You know, if you're going to put them on, put them onto objects consistently, etc. So we created our materials, and we decided that our go live date was August 2011. What we didn't want to do is we didn't want to release training materials too far away from that go live date. If we had started releasing materials in um, April or May, and the, our systems weren't going live until August, people would forget. So we'd have to retrain them again. But what we didn't want to do is go right close and then the week before we went live, suddenly start throwing out our training materials. So we decided to go about six weeks out. So for about six weeks out, once the materials are available, they're available to people continually. We released our My Guide. We had created over 900 modules of learning. But what we did more or less at the same time was we actually delivered internally over 40,000 learning modules in a six week period and our systems creaked yeah when you deliver all of that learning all in one go okay but as people were finishing their learning that the, the pressure on the system started to, to drop um, how do we know we delivered 40,000 because what we did was rather than give everybody access to my guide, which they could have, everybody's job role was assigned their learning. And then we put it through an LMS. Okay, we, we've, got a, we've got an LMS in the UK. Um, so if you were an HR consultant, you got all of the all employee stuff, how do I book my holiday, etc. But you then got all of the HR courses. 
what we also put through the LMS is any classroom training that they needed to attend, any webinars that they needed to attend, and then as they went through their learning program, okay, they could actually, things were ticked off as they actually came through. Because this was a massive change for us, especially in the UK, a lot of people hadn't had any exposure to SAP. So they had to do their learning whilst they were doing their current job with their current systems, and then in August, everything was switched off over a weekend, come in on the Monday, and everything's a new system. Okay, so the learning was there, again, to support that. So it, the actual TTKF materials underpin everything that we've got. So that was the UK. Quite stressful. Um, 2012, we had been working with Germany, we'd been working with the UK. We basically stepped back, we recreated materials, we, we bug fixed um, systems. Uh, we created materials that weren't ready at the time, etc. Because we were going to go live, or we were going to do the go live in France in uh, 2013. Now, what we'd actually done is we'd actually, in the UK, we'd created a template. We'd created a template that we could deliver TTKF materials into any country that we've actually got SAP systems. And with France, um, to say it was a, a walk in the park is probably wrong, but we knew, we, I don't think that we saw anything in France that we hadn't already seen and addressed in the UK. So in January 2013, we did a kickoff. We translated the template, that's all we did. The, the template was exactly the same for their materials. Um, we just translated it. We translated as many of the materials as we could do. So we had a lot of materials. Don't, in France, they were using the same systems as us, but they were in French. One thing that we came across here, though, is that TTKF has um, internal functionality that will tr translate information for you. What it won't do is it won't translate information that you've typed in. So, for example, for logging into a system, you would say, enter your password, and then you'd have a little tip that says, if you don't know your password or you need it to be reset, please contact the service desk. Well, that was a, a tip that we'd actually typed in. What you can do with TTKF is you can export it as a Word document, all of the tips, translate them, and then import them back in. The other thing that we had to be aware of is, is a number of our learning materials in the UK were created on test systems. And the test systems weren't quite the same as the live system and all those systems that we were using in France. So what we did was in France, we recaptured 90% of our materials. So we used all of the uh, Word documents, all of the translated information that we actually had, and then we recaptured. We trained authors. Now, our head office is in Paris. Um, we have offices in France all over. So what we did was we flew everybody, everyone that was going to be authoring. It was exactly the same. We had a training captain in France. We had a number of people that were going to create materials in France. We flew, brought them all up into Paris. We trained them. We'd translated our user guides. We translated our tips and tricks. Um, we were available through webinars or WebEx for anybody that went back into a branch. Uh, we were traveling to and from the UK to France for maybe three days a week, but we were available on the other two days as well for, for phone calls or to help them actually out. And off they went and they started creating their materials. And they went live in 2013, in June. And they delivered uh, about 300. So we've now got over 2,000 learning modules that we've created. As we move into 2014 and beyond, okay, we've exported, we've got an online service desk. We have exported every single learning module that was created in Germany, France or the UK as a link into our service desk. So for example, if you need to know how to reset your password in a system, then you can go onto our service desk, type reset password and it will bring you all of the learning modules that, that are there for resetting passwords. And we, we're using it outside of SAP. We're using it for other internal systems to create materials. So not just SAP systems, but people are starting to use that. Going forward, you know, the cloud wasn't around. 
You know, when we move to our next version, do we move into the cloud? Or do we want everything on our internal system still? You know, mobile devices. You know, we, we're in a mobility project, so you know, we need, want to deliver materials out to iPads and iPhones and tablets, etc. So these are the, the steps that we've actually got going forward. And there's our journey through to 2015. And I'm just going to do one very quick and that's our, logo. And that's our, uh, that's our live site. So our, anyone that's connected to our CC network can actually pick up onto those itself. Thank you, John. We're running Thank you out very of time, much. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> I know we're low on time now. Um, so I know we're short of time. Um, what I wanted to do is just very, very quickly uh, just have a recap in terms of uh, a summary of some of the optimizations and business benefits Computer Center are able to enjoy as part of de deploying a fully unified tool uh, like TT Knowledge Force. Because not only is it single source in its truest form, uh, you're able to, on your documentation side, your tip sheets, your, all your documentation, your help guides, etc. For our object recognition engine, you're able to reduce your catches in an order of about 50%. And this is across the board in terms of our install base. When it comes to translation, John's already mentioned that we have re-record technology, which allows us to, for example, if you capture your master's data in, or, or master training in UK or English, you're then able to re-record re that in any variant. I think we support about 40 odd variants or 40 different languages right now. And of course, I mentioned earlier on, we do single sourcing. So when you capture the documentation, all your e-learning is already created for you with some standard text. Of course, you're all familiar with, once you go to a blended or online approach, you can reduce your training by about 30% in terms of logistic costs and so on and so forth. And similar to Computer Center, if you then deploy our quick access client, you're able to enjoy 30% reduction on your help desk calls because you're, you've got a mechanism in your SysTray that is context sensitive, real time, that will then interrogate the database on what data field you're in and provide you with the learning interventions that's required not only visual guidance, but any other learning intervention you require. Of course, with a ser central server, in terms of updating uh, content, because it will change, you are then able to very quickly update that, apply the same uh, methodologies and templates, and get that uploaded to the central repository, and in Computer Center's case, then out to 10,000 employees. And, and last of all, I mentioned earlier on that Within our tool, not only have a best of breed object recognition capture for IT systems, so for any Windows based HTML or Java application, you can capture it. It's a universal recorder, and we have the highest object recognition engine in the market. But for non IT related, so for those uh, contents that you typically use Captivate for or something along those lines, then in actual fact, we're seeing a maturity in the market where organizations want. A, a unified tool. They don't want to use separate tools in order to create one bit of e-learning. So if you have any requirements that fall within these areas, we can cater for that. And you can visit us at uh, stand 153 there. I believe John is available to, to about lunchtime. So if you have any questions uh, you need answering or if you want to interrogate John anymore, feel free to join us at the stand. And thank you very much for your time.